Hello, I'm Danny the Guide, and are you ready for today's London snippet of history? Well, today we're going to the outer eastern edge of the city of London, where you will find a castle, a medieval castle with over a thousand years of history. It is London's castle, the Tower of London. And it's called the Tower of London because at its centre sits the White Tower. It was first constructed in the 11th century under the reign of William I, who's also known as William the Conqueror, who in 1066 came from Normandy as the Duke and defeated Harold of England at the Battle of Hastings. He then subsequently conquered the rest of England, making him William the Conqueror. And to control the populace of London and shock and awe-inspire and intimidate them and confirm his own status as King of England, he built a tower. He built an 11th century skyscraper to make Londoners go... And that's what we do today, even when we see a skyscraper. But back then, Londoners hadn't seen anything like it because all their buildings were one story high. Over the centuries, the tower changed to become more of a fortified castle. It's now what we call a concentric castle because it has two outer walls. They were added on by Henry III and his son Edward I in the 13th century. And this is when the royal family move from the White Tower as a palace into the riverside fortress wall because it's now a luxury riverside palace. The royal family don't live at the Tower of London today, even though there is the Queen's house, which is situated for the Queen, should she ask to stay the night at the Tower of London. And what makes it interesting is that the Tower of London falls under the Crown Estate, because its official title is Her Majesty's Royal Palace and Fortress. So it is her palace and her fortress. And as such, the yeoman warders look after it for her. They live there, they work there, and they entertain the thousands of tourists that go through it every day. They are also known as beefeaters. And the beefeater word, we don't exactly know where it comes from, but it's possibly thought they got paid in rations of beef. So they became beef eaters, literally what it says on the tin. But it's not only just home to the, yeom the 37 yeoman warders and their families, but it's also home to the ravens. Because legend has it that if the ravens ever left the Tower of London, then the kingdom would fall. So we always make sure we've got six minimum at the Tower and they're looked after by a yeoman warder, Chris Scaife, who is the raven master. But it's not only home to living animals, it's also home to inanimate objects, the crown jewels. These are the jewels worn by Her Majesty the Queen at the coronation, alongside other crowns of kings and queens of the past. But those three things does not the Tower of London make, because over its 1,000 years of history, it's changed. Its uses have changed, its functionalities have changed. Things have come and things have gone. And the best way to remember each stage of the Tower of London's history in its usage is by a secret. Now I'm going to tell you a secret that most tour guides use, and that is 18th century composer Mozart. Now, not that Mozart wrote a song about the Tower of London's functionalities that make it easier to absorb, but his actual name abbreviates the functions of the tower. So let's go through it. M, a royal mint. It used to produce the coins of the country, but that has now moved out to Wales. O, in the 17th century, it was a royal observatory, and that has now moved out to Greenwich. Z, a zoo. It used to be a royal menagerie with lions and polar bears and ostriches and elephants. But that, in the early 19th century, moved to Regent's Park, where you'll now find London Zoo. A. An armoury. 
because after all it was a castle it needed defending so there was lots of armor there but now you'll also find the line of kings which displays armor through the ages of our kings ah oh, a royal palace of course the royals did live there although we've discussed not anymore uh, but if you go into the outer wall you will find a recreation of Edward I's luxury riverside palace. And finally, T, torture and executions. Now that's the main reason a lot of people do come to the Tower of London, because of its bloody history. It's the place where Anne Boleyn was executed, it's the place where Lady Jane Grey was executed, both of them living in the Tudor dynastic period. But I'll have you know, as a prison, its last use was in 1953 with the Cray twins, who were a criminal twins from the East End of London. And its last time it was used as an execution was in 1941 with a German spy called Joseph Jacobs. Now the reason I've mentioned Anne Boleyn and Lady Jane Grey getting their heads chopped off at the Tower of London is because they make up one of the seven people to have had their heads chopped off within the walls of the Tower of London. Most people assume it's a lot more, but in reality, most of the prisoners were taken outside to the top of the hill, outside the Tower of London, known as Tower Hill, where they were made a public example of. So they had their heads chopped off in public. And one such gentleman was Lord Lovett, who was one of the last people to actually have their heads chopped off outside the Tower of London. And so many people came out to see it. They built up really shoddy stands for themselves to see the execution better. And they all collapsed in, and actually a lot of people died. But Lord Lovett took to the stand, um, to the scaffold, and thought this was absolutely hilarious. People have come to watch me die, and they've died. And so that's when the Axeman supposedly chopped off his head. And he literally died laughing his head off. So you see, that's only a snippet to the Tower of London. So I really hope that you do join me on a tour of the Tower of London because it's one of my favourite places to guide and I can't wait to take you inside. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel because you'll find more videos like this one, an introduction to, or just some other curious snippets of history. Otherwise, my name is Danny the Guide. I'm a qualified blue badge guide, so please come to London and when you can, hire a guide to take you around as it will really enliven the entire experience. So don't forget to find me on social media. Please share, subscribe and like if you can. But otherwise, I shall see you in London soon.